Hello and welcome back to the Para DDMP series. So this is our paracetamol. We left last time with me not being able to finish sort of the video on it. Um, but we have some very nice crystals here of it. Um, yeah, they're nice. Um, we got about 22 grams out of the possible 30. So we lost quite a bit and that was, that was just generally because um, the ethanol cooled quite a lot, um, or no, evaporated quite a lot as we were filtering it, um, filtering off the binders, so a lot of um, paracetamol crystallized out as it was filtering. Um, so they're basically mechanical losses there um, that account for our um, lack of 100% yield or even a good yield that's not really, 22 out of 30 is, is pretty bad. But um, definitely workable. And they're very nice crystals, actually. Um, you, this is a microscope that belonged to my grandpa when he was a vet in vet school. I don't know how many years ago. A long time ago. Um, yeah, and I took some photos of the um, crystals. I'll show you them now. So yeah, they're nice crystals. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to do a 50% uh, run of what's suggested here. Um, mainly because I don't think I have that much sulfuric acid on hand at the moment. And um, this gives us an opportunity that if we fuck it up, um, we don't use up all our paracetamol in the one run. And then we have, because we use about 10 grams, um, and then we can do another run later if, if need be. Um, and once again, like with the... Um, ODDMP, I don't want to make, you know, heaps of the PDMP either. Because once again, it is a primary explosive. Um, what we're going to do is a nitration of the paracetamol. Um, now, this is pretty interesting. Um, I do chemistry in university, and we did um, quite a reasonable topic on um, aromatic chemistry. And I did find it actually uh, quite interesting because... Um, what we're doing here is this is our paracetamol and we're nitrating it and we're going to get two nitro groups there and there. Um, when you think about it, you think, well, why don't we get the two nitro groups there or there? Um, and, well, I'm not really going to delve into the theory, but we don't actually end up with a mix of these products. We only really get this product. Um, and, yeah, so that's, you know, it's it's quite interesting why that happens. I, I'd recommend studying this if you're um into chemistry. It's real interesting stuff. Um, now, what we're going to have to do, is importantly, is we have this group here, which we don't want to cleave off just yet, because if we cleave it off, we're going to add an extra nitro group, and then that won't really work very well later on. Well, it might not even add an extra nitro group. I'm not sure. But we, anyway, the point is we don't want to cleave this off. So unlike the picric acid nitration, um, involves, um, you know, 95 degrees sulfuric acid, and we add it all at once, and it's, it's very aggressive. This is the complete opposite in that we're keeping it somewhere between 5 degrees, and we're going to add it, add the nitration mixture to the paracetamol in sulfuric acid very slowly, um, because these nitro groups are going to be added very quickly, but we don't want to sever this bond here. Now, one very important modification I'm doing is I'm using concentrated nitric acid instead of ammonium nitrate, as in the publication by um, Roscoe and Nitrogenes. Um, oh, so I've got a special mention to Nitrogenes. He sent me a very nice message on Science Madness and said he was looking forward to this, which is really nice because he's done this excellent write-up, or he's helped do this excellent write-up. As you know, he could have messaged me and said, "Oh, you know, you you're fucking it up," and you should give me more credit or something. But instead he said, oh, you, you know, doing a good job. He also explained the pink colour. Um, I can't remember exactly what it was. It's some organic chemistry oxidation to P paracetamol, P acetaminophen, um, something like that. So sulfuric acid has been in the freezer for the past day so hopefully that's at a solid minus 10 or so nitric acid has been in the fridge for the past few hours so that's a nice cold so we're going to mix these two um, together and also keep some sulfuric acid separate and um, react the paracetamol with it and then add the nitric acid sulfuric acid mix to the paracetamol sulfuric acid slowly oh and because it's midnight i thought i'd bring out the panda speakers so today's music is supplied by 
Aphex Twin um, with his brilliant album Syro, one of my favourite albums. My quality. Enjoy this album, so this video will have backing music for no reason. So bad news, this mixture has uh, gotten quite lumpy, um, the little lumps of paracetamol all in there um, that uh, aren't really breaking up uh, through the stirring and this is pretty bad, that will decrease yield. Um, so I'm going to let this warm up to roughly room temperature just to decrease the viscosity of the sulfuric acid a little bit. Um, but if I start seeing any decomposition of the paracetamol, I'll obviously start cooling it back down. But um, really want to get rid of these lumps. I can't even really crush them very well with my um, thermometer. Like if I had 10 years I'd probably be able to do that all but I've only got a few hours. Okay I think I've got quite a large amount of the lumps out just by rapid stirring. Um, it's about 15 degrees so I'm going to have to pull this down again. Um, and then we can start adding our um, nitration mix. Um, you should write I thought I wasn't writing with the uh, permanent texture, but I obviously wrote with the permanent texture. Um, really annoying. To make a super good ice bath, what we're going to do is we're going to crush up some uh, ice in our blender here. Friendly blender. Look at this, this is wonderful. Um, just ignore the large chunks. But um, here, I'll put this in with some water um, and some salt. Actually, maybe just salt. And that'll be great cooling. All right, let's do it. Uh, we'll check that this line, this thermometer here, doesn't go too much above five or 10. I'll uh, keep it somewhere between zero and, and, uh, and 10 would be great. Just because I don't think the time lapse is picking it up very well, I just wanted to show you how, how much and how quickly the temperature uh, changes with the additions here. So we're at roughly oh, 2 degrees, 2, 4 degrees there. Um, and what we're going to do is add a small amount of our mixed acids like I've been doing. And it stirs. Watch the temperature. Yeah, see look. We're right, now at 16, 18 degrees. Um, approaching 20. So it really, really jumps. So we really need to keep the addition small. So that was that was too much. I probably should have added half that amount. Um, and your ice bar should be really good. Because mine's, mine's reasonable, as you can see, it's pulling it back down fairly quickly. Um, and we're not getting any large amounts of foam or anything, so we're not going too high. We never we didn't go too high there, but we did um, get dangerously close to going too high. So we're at back down to 10 degrees now. Um, yeah, and I'll chuck the time lapse on and I'll just keep keep adding this. and the mixture has gotten uh, too thick to stir, which is very interesting. Um, yeah, just all of a sudden, I was like, oh look, the solution's getting viscous. 
Then I've just stopped. So, this is, uh, yeah, wow, that's amazing. Maybe I'll just add a little bit more acid, um, the mixed acids, and still got quite a bit to go, um, and see if that breaks it up at all. So I am going to have to add an extra 10, uh, maybe 5 grams of, of sulfuric acid to this sludge to try and break it up because I'm sterile at this stage and I can't keep adding the acids if I can't stir it. Look at that. Oh, look at that texture. There are a few things I could say to describe this, but I'll let you use your imagination. But I think this extra sulfuric acid is thinning it out a little bit. Okay, we're done. We've done all the uh, additions of the nitric acid. We're sitting at a, um, oh, it's a little high, it's about 12, but that'll come down in a second. Um, we're going to let this stir for another 20 minutes or so. Um, the instructions that we're following suggest stirring this for another hour or so, um, but they also suggested that the um, addition should only take half an hour, whereas it really took me an hour or so to do all the additions. Um, I guess that's just because my cooling bath wasn't that efficient. Um, also, I had that difficulty with the stirring in the middle there, um, where I added a total of about extra um, 12 mils of sulfuric. But um, yeah, now it's now it's stirring fine. So um, we're gonna let it stir for another 20 minutes. Um, I mean, I could let it stir for an extra hour, but what time is it? We are at yeah quarter to two in the morning so I don't want to be up all night um, yeah and I'm gonna go blend up some more ice all right it's been about 40 minutes um, this has been sitting somewhere between 5 and 10 degrees that whole time uh, we've got a whole lot of crushed ice uh, well perfectly blended ice which we're going to now add to our mixture hopefully it doesn't foam over the top This seems to have worked perfectly, so we're going to just filter this off, um, as per always. Then filter, wash with a little ice cold water, and dry thoroughly on the. Actually, we're not going to dry thoroughly on the pump today. Um, we're not going to be bothered um, because in, in the next step we're going to um, dissolve it in water and um, deacetylate it. So we're going to rip off this group at the end here and turn this into an NH3 group. So, um, we don't really need to dry it and I'm not going to store any of this intermediate. Um, uh, might as well turn all of this into isopicramic acid. But it's looking like a very great um, product here. It's a lovely orange colour as you can tell. Um, yeah, it's looking like a reasonable yield too. So, this is great. Um, this is our product. Um, so, I guess that's it, and I'll see you in the next video, which will be 
deacetylating this to um, isopicramic acid. So uh, thank you very much for watching.